Let's move on now to the characterization, the development of the characters in the play The Marriage of Anansiwa. We will discuss the character development of Anansi, Anansiwa, Christy Yamwa, storyteller, Aya Ikua, players, property man, and the girls. Let's begin with Anansi. George Kweku Anansi is a dynamic character who transformed from a poor man to a rich man. He is the central character in the play. He is a matured adult with a daughter, Anansiwa, who is of age. Anansi's personality, which exhibits his cunning, ambitious, and witty attitude, drives the progress of the story. In order to turn his life around for the better, in terms of material wealth and to have an easy life, he sets out on an ambition to get his daughter and as well married while benefiting from this marital arrangement, which is popular with the traditions of some Ghanaian cultures. Anansi promises to give Anansiwa to four prominent chiefs who are oblivious of this false plan. The chiefs in return shower him with money which elevates him from his poor life to a wealthier one. Anansi displays his wit and wisdom when he finally makes his daughter fake dead in order to find which chief truly deserved his daughter. Anansi's character satires the society these days where a lot of people outsmart others to make gains at the least provocation. He also demonstrates the extreme love of a father as he ensures continuity of her daughter's education, even if he must deceive others. It is ironic that he, however, takes the primary decision of her daughter's marriage without consulting or seeking her approval. By the end of the play, he proves to be a witty cunning man as he escapes humiliation by asking Anansiwa to feign her death. He can be described also as a good father who was able to find a good suitor for her daughter. Sutherland used Anansi to portray patriarchy as Anansiwa was not given a choice to choose her husband or have any say in her marriage. Her role was to marry primarily. Let's look at the character Anansiwa. Anansiwa is the only daughter of her father Anansi. She studies at the EP Secretarial School and subsequently the Institute for Prospective Brides. She can be described as an obedient young educated lady who relies on her father Anansi for all her needs. Anansiwa is forced to drop out of her secretarial school due to financial constraints. She initially is upset about her father's plan of extorting money from the four chiefs with the promise of giving her out for marriage. As she says, my father is selling me. I will not let you sell me like some parcel to a customer. Not ever, not ever. Her attitude switches to a joyful one when she realizes chief who is chief is one of the chiefs. She shows she actually prefers him to the rest of the chiefs. This is what motivated her at the end to pretend to be dead to spare her father of the disgrace when all the chiefs promised to come and marry her with a short notice. Even though Anaswa is educated, she is also happy to partake in the traditional outdooring ceremony ushering her into womanhood which her grandmother in the Kua spearheaded together with her friends, the girls. Anaswa's character shows some gender stereotype as her life is centered on being educated or trained for the primary purpose of marriage as she attended the Institute for Prospective Rights. Her career as a student from a secretarial school is not highlighted in the story. Let's move to Christy Yamwa. Christy is a close friend of Anansi. She is Anansi's ally in his plan of fighting suitors for her daughter. She manages the Institute for Prospective Rights she is an example of a modern classy woman. First, she attends Anaswa's outdooring ceremony and is in charge of receiving the chiefs and guests at Anaswa's fake burial. She is disliked by Anaswa's mom, Aya, perhaps because Christy is fashionable. She is not a typical traditional woman as she exhibits contemporary lifestyle. She even calls Anansi a pet name, Georgie. She is obviously in love with Anansi and takes pleasure in being referred to as Mrs. Anansi. The Storyteller The Storyteller serves as an omniscient narrator who gives a commentary on the actions of the characters through his monologues to the audience. He says, Anansi certainly needs a rest after spinning such a web. 
let me admit that I can feel a little for Anansi. I am a father myself. To tell you the truth, I wish I had a little bit of his kind of cunning. It's very clear that he knows the customs more than well. Notice how he has them at his fingertips, stringing them out and weaving them into a design to suit his purpose. So this shows that the storyteller is all-knowing. Again, he says, listen, I have a feeling he has overdone it a little bit. So he gives commentary on the on the events unfolding in the in the play. He also serves as a character engaging in dialogues with other characters in the story. Let's move to Aya. She is the mother of Anansi and sister to Ikua. She supports Anansi by organizing the custom culture of adoring Anansiwa. This custom in Akan is termed as Bragro, a ceremony organized to prepare young girls who are ready to be ushered into womanhood, a form of rite of passage. Ikua is the aunt of Anansi and sister of Aya. She plays an active role during the cultural custom of adoring and ushering Anansiwa into adulthood or womanhood. The players, the players are mainly singers and instrumentalists who are in charge of the various musical interludes within the play. Property Man Property Man serves as props but also as Anansi's dutiful servant. He provides Anansi with anything he needs on the stage. For example, Property Man helps him to take a pill and blow some more breeze when he calls him. The girls. The girls are primarily other girls of the age of Anansua and friends of Anansua who came to support her during the ceremony ushering her into womanhood. Be sure to check an analysis of the themes, language and style and other analysis of this play in this playlist.